Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. That was my first time saying that phrase in over two months because I just got through with playing the league and I haven't recorded a GIM intro since before the league started. Last video was like 460 hours of mostly AFK progress and I got two pets in the previous video, which I'm about to spoil in just a second here. So make sure you check out the last video if you missed it because it's a lot of gains. But here are the two pets I got. I got the uh, beaver, which I transformed into the pheasant, and then I did like one hour of winter toad, and I got the phoenix pet. I am back at TOA, and my goal is still the same as before the league started, which is to get Masori, so I can have that for the Tebow. Here's what the collection log looks like. 272 expert mode KC with a bunch of regular modes as well. And of course, the only three drops I don't have are the three most important items. I did a little bit of TOA in the league, but doing it in the league is very different from the main game. It's way easier. So I would say for all intents and purposes, I haven't really done TOA for two months. So I'm hoping I'll be able to jump back into it with no struggle, doing 310 invocation. Let's see how it goes. Something I'm not used to yet is how small the XP drops are, yet how much damage I still do despite, in my head, the XP drops being small. No, I just realized I'm on the wrong spellbook. I'll have to suffer through the monkey room. First raid back in the main game. There were a few hiccups. I gotta remember like how to organize my inventory for each part of the raid, but... Overall, it wasn't too bad. I didn't die. And there's a 1 in 21 chance for disappointment. Or no, that, that, there, there's a 20 in 21 chance for disappointment. Nice. Second raid back. This one went a lot smoother than the first one. 276. We got a red gem. Wow, first unique since coming back. Red gem, number 5. 277 KC. Oh man, it's a purple light, the first purple light after coming back to the main game. This is five raids in. Okay, not gonna say anything. Hmm. Back to the main game, what can I say? Back to what I'm used to from before. Wow, thing number six for the group Iron Man team. I have something I want to try that maybe will help me get the drop that I'm looking for. You know how every time I log out, I always do the thumbs up. I always say I had a good time playing. Well, what if I put a thumbs down and then the game's like, oh no, what if he stops paying for membership and then I get the drop because of that? So we'll see my next purple, what it ends up being. And if it's a Missouri top or bottom, then I think there might be merit to that. It's a fresh day today. Let's see if we can get the first back-to-back -back purple, solo purple in the TOA you know. Oh my. This is the end of my first full day of raiding since coming back, and we got the catch of runes to end it off. I feel like I did so many raids today, like the day really dragged on, and I only ended up doing 9. For comparison, when I was grinding out chambers, at the very peak I did like 20 per day, but I was like averaging like 15 plus per day, and it didn't feel that bad. But I did 9 TOAs today, and it felt pretty bad. Oh wow, bots are out in full force, huh? I got a virtual range level, but it caught me off guard and I missed the recording too. And I started thinking like, should I use the replay buffer clip even though it's lower quality? Or is the virtual range level even worth showing? I was late to start talking and my voice was flummy anyways. So I was like, all right, guess it's gonna be voiceover if I even use the clip. And anyways, I got so distracted overthinking that I died. But at least now I have this clip to talk about because there's not much else to show when I'm grinding out TOA. This amount of narration is the same amount of time worth of content I would get from like 20 hours of white lights. There's been quite a few changes that happened while I was playing the league and one of them is that certain teleports in the Nexus, they rename them and put the previous names in parentheses. I was looking for the Sentistan teleport I'm like, where is it? Turns out it's called Dig Site now with Sentistan in parentheses after it. Ano oh dude, another one that's really been bothering me, another change that they made, is that you can't go through multiple dialogues in one tick. Like for example, I would press 7 then 1 on the max cape to teleport to my POH, but if I do that... 
there's like a tick delay. You have to wait for the second menu to pop up before it actually lets you teleport home. I saw this crystal impling and I tried to catch it. And when I tried that, it went into this corner and now it's like trying to fly away from me and we're stuck in this feedback loop with each other. We're, we're both going back and forth. I think it could just do this forever until I manually stop. I didn't realize I forgot to grab the hammer. I know for sure I'm going to get this one on record. 110 virtual attack level. The Ferro Scepter is almost out of charges, so gotta get it back up to 100. Hopefully I don't have to do 100 more sessions of TOA before I move on from there. I don't think I can. Oh, the big KC number 300. Let's see, the light is white. Since this is 300 expert mode KC, we should go over the numbers of the loot and first we'll look at the collection log so you can see all the uniques that I've gotten from TOA. It's 300 expert modes, but there's also 135 regular modes. So I guess maybe you'd want to take that into account too. The loot tracker does combine all of them together, but I feel like it'd be weird to have the title of the video be 400 TOAs when over a hundred of them weren't expert modes. Either way though, I haven't checked in with the loot from TOA in a while in this series. So just to show you all the stuff I have here, look at these seeds, man, Snapdragon, Ranar, Torstal, Toe Flags. I haven't really even used these seeds either because ever since I maxed, I haven't even done an herb run. If I had planted any of these, it would have been very few, only for farming contracts. Uh, I don't know how much longer I can grind out TOA for my own mental sake, but at the same time, it's like anything else I do in the game that would involve a Tebow, I simply would not be getting the maximum potential out of it. This is something that I want to get eventually one way or another anyways, so it's like, why put it off? We're looking at 16 purples and the drop rate for uh, when you roll a purple. The body's 1 out of 12, the chaps are 1 out of 12, and we could throw the shadow in there as well, 1 out of 24. If we want to figure out the percent chance each time I roll a purple, so it's 1 out of 12 for the body, and then multiply that by 2 because there's the top and the bottom. Each one is the same drop rate, so that's about a 16.6 .6 repeating percent chance to get the top or the bottom. But if we want to add in the shadow drop rate as well, because that would be like kind of on par with getting something sick, uh, we add on 0 0.04166. So if we add back in that drop rate, it's about a 20.8% chance each time I roll a purple. So about a 1 in 5 chance each time I roll a purple to get either the top bottom or the shadow. I'll keep grinding TOA at least for this video though because I do want to keep this video based around TOA. I've done 28 raids so far. Yeah that's all I could do just keep on going right? Just keep on swimming. <gasps> Purple light! <laughs> Purple light! Okay. One in five chance of being something cool. It's so painful, man. It's so painful. <laughs> that was my last raid before bed, too. That was Fang number seven, I think. Fang number seven. I logged in this morning and I got a message. I've been granted 200 league points. <laughs> That's so weird. The league ended almost a week ago. Moment of truth. For the first time ever, will we see a solo back-to-back -back Spootog's been doing forestry as she's been editing the League's videos and AF King trying to work towards Max, and she needs some logs to buy, uh, I think she's going for the felling axe or something, so I have all these logs right here to dump into the group storage, and I gave her some extra magic logs for her birdhouse runs too. Good morning, we have a game update today, and happy Scythe Buff Day. Or, more importantly and more relevant to me, Happy Fang Nerf Day. For the Scythe, they gave it more slash accuracy and then they made it cheaper to use, less blood runes, and you don't use charges when the Scythe hits zeros. Now the Fang. The Fang was meant to be a stab weapon and that was the niche it was supposed to fill, but because of how accurate it is, it made it slash style relevant for certain bosses too. But now they removed the double accuracy rule on its slash style, so the fang is really not worth using on slash anymore. There's three places I can think of where I've used the fang on slash, which is Vardorvis, Verzik, and Duke. 
Now, if I really want to grind any of those out going forward, I would probably want to get the Blade of Salador from CG, which is fine. I mean, I want to get the combat achievements or more of the combat achievements done from CG anyways, because I want to get the master tier eventually. Kind of luckily for me though, Vardorvis is the DT2 boss I have the most KC of. I have about 500. But then again, I don't have any Vard specific uniques, which means I'm just as close to getting them as I was when I was zero KC. I think what the best solution would have been rather than what they did, which is removing the accuracy rule from the slash option, Instead, they should have just made the slash option be crush instead. I think that would solve all the problems. Speaking of being just as close to getting something as I was at 0kc, I'm back at TOA. 3, 1, 4, it's like pi. Can we get the pi or bull? A purple light. <sighs> My heart starts beating, but then I remember I'm not... I'm not getting good things from these, so... Fang number eight. Purple number 18. It's so depressing, man. I'm not quite sure if my thumbs down theory is working. Mm, I think I'll go for one more purple, at least one more. One more, uh, I'll see how I'm feeling then. Although I know how I'm feeling now, so... <laughs> Probably just one more purple for this video. Hey, that was a PB for the challenge completion time, but not the total time. I was skull skipping though, so if I wasn't skull skipping, it would have been a lot faster. Oh my god, triple torsos. 321 KC, that is the second reverse sequential three digit KC. A huge milestone for the Spookmeister. I saw my hit points. It was very, very close to... Wait, one more hit. Oh wait, yeah, right there. 70 million hit points XP. That is my highest skill on the account. This has got to be one of the fastest times I've had for the Monkey Room in a 310 Invo solo. Hey, another hit points thing. 345 KC, three digits, sequentially increasing. <laughs> I just want one more purple for this video, man. I shouldn't have said one more purple because now it's taking me a while to get a purple. Currently I'm at 32 raids without a purple, so it's uh, 1.5 times the drop rate since it's 121. Uh, but Spook Dog is available to raid today, so we're going to test our luck. Although it is going to be lower invocation, but overall it will be slightly more likely to get a purple. I've gotten so used to my ways and how I run solo TOAs with my invocations that making any kind of change is kind of a big shock to me. I've gotten to the point in my solos where it's like brain-numbing muscle memory for almost every action I do. So switching things up with different methods you would think maybe would be nice, but there's something about TOA, man. I would consider my myself generally a pretty patient person, and I think my videos reflect that based on the long grinds I've done over the years across my accounts. You know, I always talk about enjoying the journey and whatnot, but for the first time I feel like I'm actually trying to rush to get this done. And I haven't really even spent that long at TOA, at least relative to so many other grinds I've done. But there's something about TOA where any mistake I make, I beat myself up over, and whenever I die, I get so frustrated. And switching things up from the norm means my brain has to turn back on, and I have to learn a bunch of new muscle memory involving where to place my gear and how to run around and do certain methods. And that opens me up and makes me more prone to making mistakes. And when I make one mistake, I get flustered and it snowballs into a series of mistakes, which makes everything easier even more unfun. So it means Spook finished the raid, although we didn't make time, which is fine, but it ends up being the same drop rate as a team as it is when I solo. So if it's the same drop rate anyways, I may as well solo because it's taking time away from other things that she could be doing, like she's been doing Runecraft now, you know, she's trying to work towards max. And the raid this way is a lot more stressful because not only am I trying to figure out my new methods and things that I have to do, but I'm also trying to help Spook out too. And it's not her fault, I mean everyone has to learn somehow, and normally if it's any other content like God Wars or mini games or duo skilling activities or whatever, it's fun teaching and watching her learn. 
but not with TOA because I'm already so on edge and it's right on the border of being bearable when I'm zoned out and my chill solo is letting my muscle memory do all the work. Anything beyond that, anything where my brain has to like turn on and think, it teeters me over and I don't want to be that way, especially around other people. I don't know how much sense I'm making because it's late at night and I just wrote down my thoughts to ramble about and I feel like it makes more sense in my head and I'm not phrasing it exactly how I've been phrasing it in my head over the last few days. It's all I've been thinking about as I'm writing all day. I just have these thoughts brewing in my head over and over. Also kind of reiterating what I've said in previous videos, but I know bumping up the invocation theoretically makes the grind go by faster and I get the drops faster, but when I add on insanity, it changes the drop rate from 1 in 21 to like 1 in 17, but that makes the raids a lot more stressful. I'll probably wipe four times in those 17 raids anyways, and the raids are generally harder and take longer because of the increased invo, which increases the stats of all the monsters throughout the raid. And even just ignoring the higher stress levels of the higher invocation and how easy it is to wipe with insanity, just being at a higher invocation location takes an extra like four to five minutes per raid, which almost in itself balances out doing my chill 310s versus bumping it up to 350. I'd really have to push myself to consistent 400 or 425s to really make bumping up the invocation worth my time, but honestly I don't have the mental fortitude right now to deal with wiping in TOA. So yeah, I'm gonna go back to grinding out my 310 invo mind-numbing solos, go for one more purple this video, and then probably make TOA more of a background thing and focus more on other things uh, for the time being at least. It sucks for making videos too because I'm now nine days into this video with essentially nothing to show for it. And my videos on YouTube have now been spread the furthest apart pretty much or at least tied with the furthest apart I've ever made my videos before. And that would be fine if it was because I was spending time with friends or family or out doing something I enjoy. But in this case, no, it's just because I'm grinding out TOA. I have been make myself do this raid all day every day and there's not much to show in the videos with it. I kind of feel like I've become a hermit. Like I've cut out a lot of social interaction because I just want to keep raiding. I don't want to raid with anyone else or do anything else. It's been like a mental battle of endurance, my mind against itself. I'm sorry for being negative. I really don't like making videos that come off that way, but there's really no way to hide it. There's, there's no way around that. It, it is what it is. That's just part of the journey. And just like real life, RuneScape also has its ebbs and flows, ups and downs, highs and lows. All you can do is just keep on going. It's better than the alternative, right? Oh yeah, this is skull skipping. So you have to see, yeah. the, see the yellow tile I have marked just below me. Yeah. I'm standing anywhere in that column. Yeah, I kind of learned that from Loki's videos. Oh, okay. Sorry, I can't be him. <laughs> I, I try to be though. 350. Another thread. My blowpipe is really low on darts. Right now I have under 100, but luckily we have the token amethyst miner on the team, and she said she put some dart. Oh, here they are. 28,000 amethyst darts is what she uh, has to give to me. I probably use maybe like 30 darts per raid, so I'm not gonna be running out of darts anytime soon. This is 40 raids since my last purple. 316 to 356. A thread. This will be 50 KC since the last purple. I really should not have said one more purple for this video. Uh, that was like the fastest Zavak I've ever done. <laughs> 210. Well, in a 310 solo. I rushed my way through and still managed to make the time. This is my last raid of the night. Can we get a purple light? No. All day long I have forced myself to go pretty much right back in the raid instead of taking the normal like 15 to 20 minutes in between raids to do nothing. And here's the total amount, total number of TOAs I did today. 16. That is by far the most I've ever done in one day. I don't think I've done more than like 10 in one day before, so it's been a very long day. Still no purples. I'm at 59 raids. Or I guess 60 if you include that one uh, regular mode I did with Spook. 60 raids. 
without a purple. Uh, I know I said one more purple for this video, but <laughs> dude, I'm at almost three times the drop rate. I don't know how much longer I can go on doing this. I will say doing this many raids in one day did not make me enjoy TOA any more than I was enjoying it before. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do one more day and after tomorrow I'm gonna have to give up. I mean at this point I'm like not even going for Missouri. I'm just going for a purple just because I set the arbitrary goal of going for one more purple for this video. Uh, well, 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 or should I say sewer, 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 because we have Scurrius the Rat King boss today, which I'm not gonna be doing in this video, but also well, 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 because they uh, are gonna be refunding blood runes that if you've lost any in the well due to uh, the scythe changes. So congrats if you're getting blood runes back. <laughs> well, time to continue on with TOA. This is my last raid of the night tonight. I'll do one more in the morning just to wake me up before I end the video. But yeah, this is, uh, I guess, essentially the penultimate raid for this video. Let's see. No, yeah. Yeah, I gotta cut the video off somewhere, right? Because there does exist a theoretical scenario where in some universe where I never, ever, ever roll a purple. I, like, it's theoretically possible no matter how unlikely it is. So I have to pick somewhere to cut off the video. I'll do one more raid in the morning. Well, this is the last raid. Let's see if we can manage to get a purple light. No. It's a bittersweet feeling. I mean, like, it sucks that I'm kind of just giving up, but at the same time, I'm relieved to be able to do the things that I enjoy instead. It's now been 14 days, two weeks since I started the video. And in terms of in-game time, it has been exactly five and a half days, 132 hours of in-game time over the last two weeks, which has mainly been TOA. There is only pretty much only one other thing that I did on the side in this video, which there's at least one clip of, uh, which was I was doing AFK fishing Karambwans. I gained 1.1 million fishing XP throughout this video as well. I started the video off at 272 expert modes, so I did 112 raids plus the one regular mode raid. Each raid is like 35 to maybe 40 minutes but I also a lot of the time I'll spend 15 minutes in between the raids um, pretty much doing nothing <laughs> on the internet I don't even know I'm just procrastinating in between raids going on like reddit or youtube or just doing random stuff. So I know maybe it's a bit redundant when I would show those barrages of like 10 clips in a row of the loot that I would get from TOA but just to put it in perspective, when you see 10 seconds of 10 loots, that's my full entire day. It's 10 hours of raiding summarized in 10 seconds. And I've spent the last two weeks doing that. So if you're upset about having to bear through that, just imagine how I feel. This was originally supposed to be like the loot from 300 experts and a bit more regular modes, but at this point it's kind of become more like if you combine it together, it's over 500 KC. I don't even know why I'm gonna call this video, probably just something like TOA broke me. I think that'll be a good title. It's not even like TOA itself. I think it's just me. I've forced myself to grind this out, like grinding it straight out when I really don't have to. And in the future, I will develop a much healthier relationship with TOA. It's not like the end of TOA for me. Um, maybe for the next few days, I'll take a break for sure. But uh, after that, I'll just do it when I feel like doing it or maybe when friends want to raid. But I don't know if I'm going to be doing this style of grind where it's all I do because not only is it unfun for me, but I think it's also not good for YouTube because, well, first off, it takes a while to make the content and make these videos if all I'm doing is TOA. And I don't want the videos to get repetitive if all I do is TOA. I mean, I could have split this video up into probably two videos, but I don't know. <laughs> I just want to get something, but it's fine. It's fine. My last purple was 316 KC, which means it's been 68 expert, actually 69 because the one regular mode. So it's been 69 raids with about a one out of 21 drop rate. So I'm over three times the drop rate since my last purple. That's like at least 50 hours of raiding, if not even 60, which, you know, that's, that's a full work week. Plus you're coming in on Saturday and Sunday for shifts too. If, if you're going to like 50 to 60 hours <laughs> to not even get a single purple 
Uh, that's just since my last purple. But to be fair, I'm not sure what's worse, not getting a purple or getting a dupe of something we already have. On a serious note though, the further and further I got into this grind, the more frustrated I was getting. And I've been making more and more mistakes that I've never made before, which as I said, snowballs into even more frustration. I'm not sure how much of that came out in the video though. Maybe it only seems worse in my head because I'm the one that spent 100 hours raiding with all these negative thoughts constantly cycling in my head. And it's impossible to express every emotion and stage of grief I went through in this grind. I know it sounds dumb, like it's only a video game, but I think there really is a strong connection between lessons you learn from this game that are applicable to real life. Or more specifically from the last two weeks, things like patience, anxiety, shame, and managing frustration and other negative emotions that tend to come with it. And now I've finally come to the last stage of the cycle, which is acceptance. I'm not gonna reach my goal today or this week, probably not even in the next month and that's just life. Sometimes you could try your hardest and do everything right and still not win.